Guys, life is getting so crazy. Right now it is a Monday, 8.18 a.m. and I'm sitting at home. And normally I'd be in the studio or in the newsroom or on a shoot, but because of the coronavirus, reporters are not supposed to come into the station. And we're supposed to just be at home, work from home until we get our assignment and then we go out. Things have escalated so fast, especially here in Ohio. It's just insane. I mean, last week amongst reporters, you come into work, normally you'll ask each other, what are you covering today? What's your story today? But we were all asking each other, what's your angle today? What are you covering on the coronavirus? So yeah, I just wanna kind of bring you guys along with me as a TV news reporter, because a lot of people are actually just ordered just to stay home. Zach, for instance, he's gonna be working from home for the next foreseeable future. But as a reporter, it obviously doesn't work like that. That. And the news is so important right now. I mean, imagine sitting at home wondering what the heck is happening and you turn on your TV and it's just black. Oh, nope, sorry, news reporters and news anchors, they're quarantined too. No, like this quarantine and staying inside does not apply to us. Obviously it doesn't apply to a great deal of people like firefighters and police officers. I wanna bring you guys along with me on this journey. I've never experienced anything like this and they're saying this is a once in a lifetime thing like a pandemic of this size. Something that no living person has experienced before and it's kind of scary. And I don't wanna be alarming. Uh, they, they're taking these drastic steps to make it okay, but it's really scary to think about what could happen if this thing spreads. Technically right now I still am on my lunch break. So I'm just gonna use this time to work ahead for tomorrow on my laptop over yonder and just wait to see where I get called to next, which is, it's just so weird getting called from my house. Like I can't explain, like, I feel like I'm like doing something wrong right now. Like I shouldn't be here, I, but I'm just waiting. Right now our fridge is more full than it has ever been in our lives. Like it doesn't even look like that much on here, but guys, trust me, we never have this much stuff. Also, we stocked up on obviously like stuff that doesn't go bad. Obviously we have a lot of potatoes, a lot of rice, I got pasta. Also, luckily I've always been a bulk shopper, so not only do we have alcohol, but look up here, we have so much oatmeal. Could last us a lifetime. And right now in Ohio, the grocery stores are madhouses. So Zach went to the grocery store at seven o'clock this morning. It opens at seven and he said it was just crazy. The people were actually on the loudspeaker telling everyone you can only buy two of this item, two of that item, because everyone's just trying to buy everything and there's not enough for everyone. And for whatever reason, the big commodity is toilet paper. Everyone is just, that was one of the first things that flew off the shelves, everyone getting toilet paper. And luckily, Zach came through for us and also, I came through for us last week. I just felt the urge to get paper towels, so we should be good. And it's so funny the way my brain works because Zach texted me saying, what should we get? Like, give me a list of what you want. And I'm just like, rice, because they use it on Survivor and they live 40 days on rice. And so we could too, and that's very dramatic. But here in Ohio, it has been madness. And also, I really don't like this whole remote working thing. I am literally sitting by my phone, so anxious about not missing a call or I don't know. I don't like this at all. Even when I'm working from home, I am still supporting Local 12 with some oatmeal in a mug. Normally I have this in a cup every day at work, but uh, oatmeal in a mug is always a, a great option. I actually like eating oatmeal in mugs and cups better than bowls. I just feel like it's more compact and easier to eat. And we are working on our story for tomorrow, the primaries. Obviously, as you can imagine, there's probably gonna be very low voter turnout. And as we're working on that, I am waiting for a second call. My uh, assignment editor just called me and said I'll probably be covering a Cincinnati City Council meeting starting, I have no idea when. <laughs> she didn't say when, I don't know. This is all unprecedented territory, like driving there myself. I, I, I do not know my way around anywhere. Uh, but obviously, that's what GPS is for. It is 10, 16 a.m. and I just got back to work. So I know I just said reporters were not allowed at the station, but it's not a hard and fast rule. For instance, they want me to be live in studio in the noon on that press conference conference, which they actually, this is another weird thing, didn't send me to. They want to limit the amount of people who are going places, so they sent just a video journalist, a photographer, and not me. So I'm going to go into the newsroom right now, get that video, find out what was said in that news conference, and then front it from the studio for the noon. And pretty much this is just such a uh, we'll see as we go type situation. Like no one, no one has a plan. I mean, I don't mean that in a bad way, like no one has a plan, but like Things are changing so fast. We're all just doing the best we can. It is one of those moments where I feel like superwoman because I feel like I've done five million things within the last two hours. And we are actually, do you guys remember this place back in the breaking news center? This is where I'll be live at noon because my news director just made an announcement that no reporters are allowed to do live shots in the studio anymore, 
which is crazy. That was obviously, you guys heard, I told you, that was part of the plan. And so we are back here. If you guys remember, I filled in here for about a month and it feels so weird to be back. And I, the reason I'm also scrambling right now is because if you guys remember, we don't have a teleprompter in the Breaking News Center. So I have my script and I always have to memorize the part where I'm on camera. And then once it says take VO, that means it takes video and I can look down at my script. But yeah, it's definitely not just a straight through teleprompter type deal. You are standing up there, you are looking into this camera. I can distinctly remember some moments and it has happened, it will happen, where your mind just goes blank. 100% blank, I'm standing up there on that little platform. By the way, we had to get that platform in here within like the past five minutes because I like didn't realize how short I was until I worked in TV news and everyone else is taller than me and I always need that platform so that I don't look like a freak on camera, you know, not the right height. Also being the right height makes a huge difference because you want to be at the height of the lighting. If you're not tall enough to hit the lighting, you're in the dark. But yeah, we have the box, we're ready to go. Oh, I actually need to. So if you guys see, we have all these cameras that will be in the background and you actually control them. I have to see if I remember. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Let's see. Um, okay, wait, breaking three. And then what if I change it to tower cam? Oh, that looks beautiful. Nice, I do remember it. See over here, this is us, who we are. And of course, we are getting a lot of texts from my mom. She sends my brother and me texts every single day, updates about the coronavirus. It's funny, kind of not funny, but kind of funny that my mom has been preparing my brother and me for an apocalypse since we were born, since we moved out on our own. She's always like, you need 50 cases of rice, 20 cases of water, a year's supply of food in case anything hits. And we're always like, you're crazy. And now it's like, oh, but anyway, we're actually about to be live in like two minutes. What am I doing? Another topic was how we should be reaching out to people who are quarantined. More talked about the fact that it's extremely isolating. So she suggested picking up your phone and calling anyone you know who is in this situation. In the Breaking News Center, Clancy Burke, Local 12 News. Yeah, good advice. All right, thank you, Clancy. Wow, it has been absolute craziness. I just woke up, found out the Ohio primary election is canceled. I went to bed last night. It was still on. I woke up probably six times in the middle of the night, half asleep, looking at all of this new information, emails, text messages I was receiving, text messages from potential interviewees who now I will not be interviewing. It was gonna be a pastor about how people should come out and vote, but now, that's not the case. And it was a very restless night for me, kind of, but I really know nothing. I need to get into work and figure out exactly, I, I mean, obviously I know the election is canceled, but I really don't know the details about what happened. So this is crazy. I mean, I was supposed to cover the freaking Ohio primary election today and all that's canceled. And the latest that people should not gather in groups of more than 10, 10. So I need to get ready and get into work, but this is just this is craziness. It is 4.47 a.m. I'm right now outside the Board of Elections. You can see some of the other news cars are here as well. And this is our story for the first part of the morning. Normally, actually, I am in the news car with, that's Mike over there, but not today, just because of the fact that everyone's separate. He's not reporting to the station, so I was like, I'll just take my own car. Like, you don't have to pick me up. I seem to be the only reporter who still goes to the station sometimes. Like, they want me to. Like, I need to do stuff there. But yes, I finally know all of my information, guys, and this is what I live for. I've live for reporting on things that I'm closely following when I'm just chilling at home. If Local 12 isn't on, then CNN is on. If CNN isn't on, another news channel is on. Like, I am just following this so closely and there's nothing better than reporting on something that you are, like, very passionate about. I'm excited, actually, for my hits today, which sounds weird. Like, normally you don't get excited for a story like this because it's not happy. It's, pull, like, the election being canceled, but I'm excited to, I don't know, just give the information. I don't know, don't judge me, okay? I'm just a reporter who's trying to live her life during this time. And here's a rough idea of my script. I like to get this in for the producers so they know roughly what I'm gonna be talking about and all that kind of jazz. So I just pulled into my apartment complex after my live shot. This is my home base, my, it's so weird. Like normally I'd be going to the office right now or the newsroom. Nope, working from home, but not really because I'm obviously about to go out after this, but uh, it's official. Everyone is staying home. I mean, I'm one of the only people I know who is going into work during this. As you can see, we've got cars. And normally people are at work right now. Everyone's working from home and then I'm like out in the world. And it's it's weird. It's weird passing gyms with not a car in the parking lot. It just makes me feel so grateful that I do have a job. I mean, I know we talk about how like, oh my gosh, work is work and this and that. But there are so many people because of this that don't have a job, they're not getting a paycheck. You know, people who are waitresses and bartenders and it just makes you grateful that I have a job. All right, so we've made it back home and I wanna show you guys two things. The first is what no one sees, that yes, I wear two pairs of socks. One is a very long wool pair and then I just put on these regular ones. And the second is a neat little TV thing. Our spectrum bill is very high each and every month, higher than we want. And that is because we have a little thing I like to call 
DVR. Wow, the timing of that was impeccable. So as you can see, actually this is giving you guys a little, little inside info into what I DVR'd. 60 Minutes, Democratic Primary, Democratic Debate, Cuomo Primetime. Clearly I am a news reporter who's very into news, but then we get over here and I have DVR'd every single station's morning show at least one hour from that morning, as well as the five, the six, and the seven from This Is Us, Good Morning Cincinnati. And I do this because I feel like you can learn so much by seeing how other people do things, by seeing how another reporter covers the same exact thing you covered and you learn what did they do that worked great what did they do that you were like oh that just did not look good i don't want to do that not a mean way it's just helping yourself and i'll be honest i don't actually look at any of the station's coverage anymore and i know i really should because it truly is helpful but i just don't have the time i probably do that's an excuse when i first moved to dayton and i could not report to save my life. And I was just really uncomfortable on air. I started DVRing the other news reporters and watching them. And there was this one reporter in particular who was so good and everything I aspired to be. And we would be at the same exact scenes, but obviously I can't, you know, stand and watch her in the moment. Like we're covering a fire and I just turn and I'm like, oh, let me just watch her. So I would, I would DVR her, which is probably really creepy. And I learned so much by seeing how she covered scenes and I would rank it in my head, like who covered it better that day. She covered it better every single day for months. And I'm just being, I, I, I know how to rank myself. I know how to objectively rank myself. I, that was not just me being humble. I truly was terrible. And I'll never forget there was this one day we were both covering a fire and I was just like, oh my gosh, I did a better job. And I don't mean that to sound like, oh, I did a better job. No one, no one knew that but me, like in my head that I thought that, but it was just a matter of, wow, I am learning and we did it. And the next day she did a better job and she did a better job for pretty much every day after that. But it was just, I needed that one, that one win, that one victory. And that brings me to my point. I just like having these just in case I am curious how someone else covered a story. I can access that and actually we can go to my story from this morning. Here's a local 12 broadcast in fast forward mode and our anchors right now are also isolating themselves and distancing themselves where no one is sitting at the anchor desk together anymore. They're all separate. It's super weird, but they're like telling the viewers why. So it's not just, you know, why don't they like each other? Actually, let's see. The order was for them to explain to the viewers at the beginning of each half hour. So let's see how they did it at the beginning of the 630. Sheila, you're going to have to take that for the get to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic in a moment. As you can tell, Bob and I are separated over here this morning <laughs> to practice social distancing. Yeah, for that reason, you will not be seeing John Lundlax in this half hour. He will be back at 7 a.m. as we head over to Star 64, so get ready for that. Again, all this to make sure we're staying healthy and bring you the latest on what's happening. Close Wells Clancy Burke joins us live from outside the Board of Elections with the latest developments. Clancy, depending on what time a person went to bed last night, what they're hearing this morning might be totally different. I was one of those people, Bob, who woke up shocked this morning. I went to bed thinking we were going to be voting today, but that is not the case. And by the way, 6.30 a.m., this is the time polls would normally be opening, but I think we can all agree there is nothing normal about this week. You will not be able to vote today, and it is all because of these three papers right here. This is an order from the state health director. And it is kind of weird seeing myself on the TV as compared to, like, when I check it out on the computer. And I really should, and every single reporter really should be watching myself daily and learning from myself and critiquing myself and all of that and I'll admit I don't do it sometimes it's really just too painful when I sound like just not how I want to sound but that's how you get better so I really need to get better with that but it really is cringy and I know that sounds so weird coming from me I film YouTube videos all the time I've been filming YouTube videos since I was in high school but I don't think that'll ever change at least for me by the way Zach is in the bedroom on a work call he's working from home as I mentioned One thing is certain though, and it's that it does if you're in a turtleneck. It's 10.54 and I have just been staring at my work phone, refreshing it over and over again, waiting for a call. Because the game plan is for my assignment editor to call me and tell me my assignment, what am I doing, and I have not heard from anyone. And this whole remote working thing does not work for people like me. I am the most anxious person you'll ever meet, which I've learned to accept about myself. And I don't say that as in like, Oh my gosh, I'm defeated. I'm just always gonna have anxiety. That's not the case. I just have anxious traits. There are some people, for instance, who are so go with the flow and, and relax, and that's just not me. I will always be a naturally anxious person, but I have just learned to deal with it where I don't let it turn into anxiety or anxiety attacks. I just, I'm like, wow, 
The heart rate is up as I'm waiting for this call. My bag is packed, my boots are lined up, and I am ready to jet out the door, but no one is calling me right now, and it is stressful. How weird is that, that I could be stressed out by not having work to do? But really, that's like the most stressful thing ever. Luckily, I've been sitting here and editing this vlog, like the what you're seeing before this, which is nice, but I really don't know what people who have been working from home, working from home, a lot of people have been doing a whole lot of nothing, are doing. I don't know how you're coping, how you're surviving. Like, you'd go crazy. I mean, you can't even go to the gym. What? And I guess if you're the type of person who can like easily binge TV shows and movies, then you're fine and good to go, but I cannot. It's a very weird problem I have where I, I just lose interest like that. I don't know, I'm going stir crazy. I just need someone to call me and give me an assignment. Like, that's one trait that I definitely got from my dad. He's like the hardest worker ever. He likes working, like he just, he's a carpenter, so it's <laughs> manual labor and it's difficult, but he is just all about it. He works on the weekends. He works late sometimes and I feel like I never understood like how the heck can you you know be doing this all day Because you know for me if I have to like hammer stuff and lift things no, but I get it like you just like to be doing something You like to be productive and I feel like a disgusting couch potato I've just been sitting on this couch and the wor the weirdest part is the worst thing is I'm not even just lounging around I'm editing this video, but I just feel I don't know. This is weird guys. Hi, my name is Clancy Burke And I'm a reporter for local 12. How are you doing? Good morning, my name is Clancy Burke and I'm a reporter for Local 12. You know that saying, be careful what you wish for? That is definitely striking a chord with me right now because I just spent the past probably 35 minutes on phone calls organizing stories for tomorrow and tomorrow. Actually, both of them are for tomorrow. And there are just so many people not getting back to me, not answering, saying they don't want the media, and um, it's a great time to be alive. If you want to be a news reporter, by the way, this will be your life. Calling people and having them reject you and not letting it hurt your self-esteem and your soul as it is hurting mine. Kidding, but anyway, we are done with work. It is officially at 12.32, and you know what time it is? When all of the gyms in Ohio are closed, Blagilates has you covered. Fun fact, this girl Cassie, I used to do her workouts when I was in high school and college and even a little bit after college. I just, I, I really like the way she is, her energy and everything. And I'm about to do one of her ab workouts. You're probably thinking, Clancy, what are you doing? You still have your turtleneck on. Yes, yes I do. Our apartment is quite cold right now and so I will do a workout in a turtleneck. But really, this is just ab movements. I don't sweat. It's just, it's hard. If you want to try this, blog a lot of these abs on fire, but I don't sweat. So we're fine. We're good. We're cold. And I posted on my Instagram and my Facebook last night that I walked to my apartment gym only to find that it was closed because of the coronavirus, which I did not think they were gonna close like our private gym. Zach and I thought we were like getting away with something by having it, but nope, that was shut down too. And everyone was commenting on my post being like, oh my gosh, just you can do at-home workouts, at-home workout videos, and I totally agree. Like I used to live off of at-home workout videos. I was never part of a gym. That was how I got my workout in, but now, I love the gym. There's something about being at the gym. It helps my like mental space as well. Like right now what I'm doing just this is not this is not the move. This isn't really enjoyable. It's like I'm in my apartment still. I like going to the gym, clearing my head, but we are going to make it work. That's the only time you've ever seen a person doing a workout wearing a turtleneck, but hopefully it's not the last time. Hopefully we can get this trending, turtleneck workouts 2020, you know, building up the sweat. I don't know, guys. Time to go eat some lunch and then go to bed for my afternoon nap. Just got in a nice hour and a half long nap. Wish it was longer, but I've spent the past hour and a half trying to get everything worked out for tomorrow. That is the thing about the morning shift. I feel like you spend a lot of your time, not a lot, it's, it's not a big deal, but there definitely is a considerable amount of your free time after work just trying to set things up for the next day. So that is what I've been doing. But, you know, from the comfort of my my bed, this has been uh, brilliant. This is that, what, who am I? Why did I say brilliant? Let me know if you want me to do more videos like this, kind of just bring you along with me in this weird time to be alive for a TV news reporter covering the coronavirus and all of the new changes that are being implemented and be sure to follow me on social media because i've been doing a lot of updates on just everything behind the scenes life and then also just what the heck is happening with this world on twitter instagram and facebook so i'll have that linked down below thank you guys so much for watching what's happening in my voice i'm gonna go i'll talk to you guys later bye